welcome to Super Coach Edge. Today it's just me, just Liam. I'll be your host today. Um, going going solo as we run through a quick team reveal episode. Uh, coming out of round zero. So it's going to be a bit weird being without Damon. Normally, um, yeah, I'm normally recording with him. Uh, but yeah, be flying solo just with me today. Um, as we run through a quick rev- quick team reveal. So let's get straight into it. Alrighty, so let's kick off with the defense line. And in D1, it should probably come as no shock. It is Nick Dacos. Um, I think with his ownership of 69%, um, should come as no surprise. I think that there is a degree of if you don't start him, um, he becomes a bit of an antipod. If he does have some low games, obviously has um, a tough matchup to begin the season, but did also pump out a 130 um, on the weekend against the Suns, I think it was 130, um, and looked good um, in the preseason as well. I don't think there's any harm in picking him as your D1, and I think you should be doing it with that mid-defense eligibility. You could also pick him in the midfield if you want to stack your defense a bit differently. Now, my uh, D2 probably again comes as no surprise. It is Tom Stewart comes in at value as a value option considering he did have those injury affected games in 2023 which uh did get his average a little bit so he is underpriced for what we're used to um we'll be starting him at d2 i don't think there's any concerns with that i have chosen to bypass the likes of sicily and luke ryan as a result um but i think that stewart uh is technically a value option at 635 which is insane to say now moving on um, we go down to Harry Sheasel, who sits in D3 currently for me. Now, he probably sits there just on the basis that he is in 43% of teams. Um, so he does feel like a safe pick, um, but he's probably the one that's most likely on the chopping block for me at this stage. At 556k, I think we I think we can get him cheaper. Um, or not even cheaper, but just at around this price. I don't think he'll skyrocket necessarily. Price of that 99.5 average. I think with the likes of Fisher and um, Co um, playing off that halfback line, he um, isn't necessarily the only player. I mean, obviously he did have um, Zeeble and Hall playing there and that didn't necessarily affect his scores massively. He was still able to score well. And we saw in the preseason matchup that he was able to score well with Fisher scoring, you know, 100 and something. And she's all still managing to eke out 100 as well. So I'm not too concerned, though he's probably the one most likely on the block in defense if I do need to to find some cash somewhere. Um, so maybe downgrading him um, to someone else like a Will Powell, who I think I'm quite interested in, though his injury history it's probably a bit of a concern there, or even a Lockie Whitfield, who again, injury history is a big concern. But if you start him at least, um, you're only wasting one trade, not two, um, if you have to get him in. Now, moving on to my D4, um, it is Hayden Young. Again, in 41% of teams, um, I think at his price, priced relatively well, I think 100 um, average is probably what we'll expect from him. The role looks good. He's getting um, forward of center as well so not just playing off that back line Um, and we saw what he could do last year when he did have that run in the back half of the year so I think he's a pretty solid pick at 41% ownership um, pretty safe one as well Um, speculative still but not as speculative as some others that we will chat about so the next pick really comes in probably as a high priced rookie you could argue probably at his price point not really a um, mid price at, at all. Um, and it is uh, Zach Williams, 216.1K. Now, he's one that's made his way in and out of my side. I was a bit worried that he wouldn't necessarily start in round one uh, or round zero, but him obviously playing there. He did obviously miss the preseason matches. Um, and so that was a bit of a concern. Um, but him playing in that, that game on the weekend against Brisbane, he looked good. He looked really good, to be honest. Uh, managed a bit in the last, I think, um, but still managed a score of 73, which I think will be enough for him to make cash. He looked good. The role's definitely there for him. And I think with Doherty, I mean, Doherty was playing probably more as a midfielder anyway, um, but yeah, Williams will get enough time off that half back line to, to score well. 
think he's a safe, safe enough pick now. Now moving on a D6, it is another rookie, a uh, rookie price player, uh, coming in at a price of 150.7k. It is Josh Gibkus. Now looking again at his stats from the weekend, he um looks pretty good, scored relatively well, um, and did what we needed him to do. So he did manage a score of 76 at 150.7K. I think that's exactly what we need. He'll make cash, um, and it's not too too concerning with him being on field as well. I think he's got good job security and his scoring potential is there. Um, might be a bit of rookie roulette between some others, but, yeah, definitely feel safe picking him and having seen him on the weekend. Um, now, on to the bench. First up, we do have from my mob and... Um, becomes no surprise priced at 123.9k it is Zach Reed. Pretty pretty common pick, I'd say. Uh he's in 43% of teams. Ridley out for the first couple of weeks with a um quad injury. I think he's a pretty safe bet there. I think he'll still play that role that he played in the practice match against Geelong. I don't think that'll change. I don't think he takes on the Ridley role. I still think he sort of maintains the role he was playing um on the sort of second second tall. And I think Cox comes in to play the Ridley role potentially uh, or reshuffle so that he can play that. Um, he's really probably only really fighting with Laverde who won't like, I think Reed is the preferred option and um, Baldwin who is now out with a foot injury, I think. Um, and so won't be, won't be concerned. So Reed's got good job security scoring potential as a key position defender will be up and down. So wouldn't bank on him too much. Um, but I think he's a good pick regardless. And now rounding out the defensive line, um, probably one that this spot was held by Caulfield, more as a placeholder. I'm a bit concerned with him at this stage. Um, if he's named, I might have to, to consider him, but I'm not sure he will be. It is Blake Howes. He looked really good on the weekend against Sydney in his debut. And I think he's one that a lot of people will consider. I mean, he scored a score of 91, so he's going to skyrocket in price. So he's worth getting in. Remember, he's going to go up in price quicker, like Gibkiss as well. Their first price changes will be in round two, except for Williams because he has the buy in round two. Um, but Howes and Gibkiss will be going up that week earlier. Um, and so obviously we've seen that score of 91. Get him in your side because he looks like he'll be a good cash cow. They had a good role with 17 possessions and good time on ground at 70, well, relatively good time on ground at 74% compared to some others. That's where I'll be going with the back line. Um, pretty set. I'd say she's probably the biggest concern. And obviously the, the rookies, as I've said, they're going to come down to the team sheets on th Wednesday and Thursday night, um, just making sure they're all named. But she's will probably the one that if I needed to downgrade someone, it's most likely going to be him. Now let's move on to the midfield. And we are paying up big bucks for Bonton Pally at M1. I know it's a lot, 724.6K. Um, and it he hasn't probably moved from my side. I start I've decided to start him purely on the basis that he is owned by 42%. So um quite a lot of the competition. Um and his 129 average makes him a captaincy option week to week. Um I also look at the guys lower down on the list, and I'm not sure there's enough value. Um, sorry, not that others are value. There's no value in Bonton Valley, but I just don't think that the others necessarily provide the same level of captaincy options. Like I think Dacos does in our back line there and Bont will. Um, and that's what we're looking for week to week. It's a bit more, it's a bit more of a strong option, I think. Um, and the strength that it'll lend to us as a captaincy option week to week is what we want. Like you're not looking at him to make money. You're not looking at him as a value option. You're looking at him for the sort of what he can provide in terms of captaincy options from week to week. And I think that's what we're going to get with Bond um, compared to others. I mean, looking down the list, Zach Butters is probably the only one, other one there that I trust week to week. Clary, it's hard to tell what's going to happen with him. Petrarca being a bit more, being a bit more forward, you know, is going to have a bit more volatile scoring. And then you're looking at Laird, Merritt, don't trust them necessarily week to week to put up a captaincy score every single week, which is what I think we'll see with Bond. I mean, that's what we saw last year. Um, now moving on to M2. And 
Uh, it is at this stage Tom Green. So Tom Green comes into the side, 621.5K. He, again, played on the weekend against the Pies and punched out a score of 132. Team high uh, for the Giants and almost a game high. It was 133 to Darcy Cameron, but um, Tom Green scored 132 with 30 disposals. Um, and the goal as well in 87% time on ground. So pretty safe bet. At the very least, my intention is he has the round, I think, the round three by, but he also plays North and West Coast to start the season. So if he can punch out, you know, a 130-plus score in those two games, he also offers us up an option as a captaincy or vice-captaincy player, um, but also just strong scores. Um you could, but he could potentially then make some cash uh, with that one thirty two. His break even in round one is uh, one eleven, so he's going to go up in price um, based off like you know that's going to lower his break even for the next round. Hopefully, um, continues that trajectory over the next couple of rounds against North and Port uh, and West Coast, and then we can see him this buy and we'll either potentially move him on. Or I think he'll end up being an, a keeper. Um, so I probably will keep him, but we'll just assess where we're at in that round um, as to whether I need to bring in someone else or if there's another flavor of the month that I'm going to miss. Um, just with the extra 40, you know, with the 40 trades instead of the the 30 um, or 36 or whatever we had last season. Um, can be a bit more aggressive in my trade strategy, but he has been in my side most of the preseason as well. Now, the next guy sitting at M3 Um is currently Darcy Parrish. Now he has um, some injury cloud around him with um, potential hamstring injury um, or hamstring tightness. Um, so it could be in doubt for round one. We're not sure. Um, club is suggesting that he's not, um, but I'm not sure we'll have some scans and some further information. At this stage, he's sitting in my side because I don't know who I want him to move him on to. Potentially, um, there's, I might move him around to somebody in the forward line, or I might move him up to a potentially a LDU or a Zach Butters who I've sort of bypassed. I did have Goulding in my side. I think with what we saw on the weekend, his score of sort of 70 odd means he's going to decrease in price. So it's not worth starting him as much as I do want Goulding. Um, I think we're going to bypass him at this stage. So yeah, it might be, so Parrish might move to a Butters, a Sarong, or a, or a uh, LDU um, of those guys, probably Sarong's probably the the most lo- the most likely option. LDU, I just worry about with his sort of injury history. I got burnt by him a couple of times last year, and Butters as well with that ankle. Um, yeah, not 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 entirely sure. We'll see how we go, and and go from there. But yeah, Sarong at nine percent of teams could be a nice little sort of pod option. Uh, instead of Parish, who does sit in 6% of teams, so another pod, um, and I'm sure that will decrease um, as this week continues. Um, I wouldn't even be surprised if he is named and becomes a late out, just for anyone that is considering starting him, so just be careful. Don't assume that if he starts, he's named in the team on, on Thursday, that he actually plays on Saturday, so just keep an eye on that. We are lucky that he does play on the Saturday Arvo, I think 145-ish. So there'll be time for us to move him on um, to another player if need be. Now, moving on to Took, uh, sorry, to, oh, gave it away, Took Miller. Took Miller does sit in M4 for me at this stage. I think he's a big value option. We saw what he did on the weekend as well, um, playing against Richmond. Um, I think I was a little bit worried um, about him and any really all the Gold Coast sort of mids, um, just on the basis that Dimmer's, Dimmer's Players tended not to have big scorers, um, but his 116 um, is exactly what we need. I better add him into the side, shouldn't I? There he is, Took Miller, obviously priced in at an average of 97.6. So if he can get up to that 110, 111, uh, 115 mark um, for an average, he is very underpriced and will be uh, hopefully a keeper by end of the season. We've seen what he can do. He is another one that may make his way out, depending on what I do. Um, you'll see later in the forwards what I'll be talking about. Yeah, so hopefully hopefully I can start him and, and hopefully he goes well. Now moving on, and probably a player I'm pretty bullish on um, across the season. One of the first true mid-prices, I guess, 
um, in my side at 492.8K, it is Nick Martin. He looks the goods off that halfback line. Um, I think the role will suit him and his precise kicking. The role, the, the Bombers will be looking to get the ball into his hands as much as possible. And I think he'll be given, um, yeah, a good opportunity for him to increase his scoring um, base and play as a defender. I mean, just quickly looking at his score in the preseason match against Geelong, he managed a score of 109 from 88% time on ground. He had 28 disposals. And, I mean, he did kick two goals, which he won't do every week, so that will have inflated his score slightly. Um, but, yeah, the 109 is still a very strong score. Um, and I think we'll continue to see that as the year goes on and potentially pushes him into a, you know, he'll get defensive status, so he'll become a mid-defender um, and then potentially gives him um, the ability to sit in D5 uh, eventually. Now, moving on, now we've got some true rookies coming into the side. So we're going to scroll right down uh, and this should come as no surprise who this first one will be. And it is at 202.8K, Colby McKercher. Looks good in the preseason. I think at what's his ownership, 59%, um, pretty solid pick. 202.8K will have good job security, good scoring potential. Um, I think it's worth getting him into your side. Um, played against the Saints. Didn't have the biggest score off the top of my head. When I go back to have a look, yes, he scored. 55, so not the greatest, had 78% time of ground, 18 disposals. Um, I think, yeah, I'm not I'm not too worried about that. I think considering his high um, ownership, uh, it, it's worth getting him in. Um, the next one on the list, we'll scroll down. Again, shouldn't come as a surprise, Riley Sanders, 66 point, uh, 66% ownership, 184.8K. He sits in M7. Um and again, looking at his scoring against the Hawks in the preseason match, he had a score of 86 from 80% time on ground, had 30 disposals. He looked the goods, get him in, um, pretty safe bet, I think. Good job security, good scoring potential, um, a good role. Um, nice one to have there. Now, rounding out the on-field options, it is Henry Husswaite. Um, 184.8 for the Hawks. Um, he sits in 19% of teams, so not not a massive amount. Could hurt you potentially, obviously, that same game as Sanders. And he is scored an 84, 17 disposal, 73% time on ground. Um, played a pretty good game. Five tackles, rotated through the midfield. Good roll. Um, 184.4K. Get him in your side. Um, he'll be looking to um, yeah make some good cash there. Now moving on to my bench and first up, another player that probably comes in, round zero has thrown in the ability to see some of these players um, and give us a bit more of a chance to understand roles and um, scoring, um, which could be a good thing, could also mean that there's a bit of recency bias. Um, but I have got Matt Roberts in here. He managed a score of 76 um, but at that price point, much like Gibicus, is going to make bulk cash quickly. Um, he's already got that score in bank, so he's going to um, appreciate in price quicker. His buy is in round five, so that will be the issue for him, like a number of these players. Same round as Nick Dacos, um, Roberts would be the same, Grundy, you know, James Jordan. All those ones we will have to consider what we do there um and you want to load up on them but his score of 74 already um or 76 sorry um means that he, that's already in the bank he'll he'll appreciate in price quicker um and we already know what he's, he's sort of scored um which will be a positive for us there now moving on um this will be dependent on team sheets it is currently 123.9k jeremy sharp now there's word that he might not he's had some issues so i'll be looking watching close what closely watching him you could look to a jack carroll at a similar price point 123.9k um start as a sub looked pretty good considering he got on relatively early so might have the ability to um hold his spot with the doherty injury unfortunately um, but could be good for him and his role. 
Um, he managed a score of 65, kicked a goal, 10 touches, two tackles for 65 on that that day. Could be another option um, priced at the same 123.9K. Jeremy Sharp, yeah, I'll be looking at the team sheets to make sure he's in, but if he is, hopefully we can start him. Now, rounding out the defensive bench, it is Jai Clark uh, from the Cats, 123.9K. He um, played against the Dons in the preseason um, and scored 86 cash cow, 17 disposal, 69% time on ground. Um, yep, yeah, I think there's not much more to say there. They're, they're looking to bring him in. They want to focus on him as the youth. So I think easy pick, get him in, make sure obviously he's playing, but I think he will be. Um, so I think it's a pretty safe bet there. So Sharp did play in the uh, game matchup against Port Adelaide um, for Frio. Just going back to him quickly, he scored a 51, kicked a goal, 10 disposals, 77% time on ground. Um, not not the greatest score, but I think shows that he is in that that sort of side. Um, did have 10 possessions, which eight of them were kicks, three marks, two tackles. Did rotate across that wing, so one to consider um, there. Just obviously watch team sheets. Now let's move on to the rucks quickly. Again, no shock. Going to not talk about it too much. Maxi Gorn didn't have the greatest day um, on sun, Saturday. Uh, sorry, no, Thursday last week against Grundy. Um, started out hot, started out very hot, but then cooled pretty quickly, scored a 72, um, kicked one behind 82% time on ground, 14 disposals, obviously 37 hit outs as well, four tackles, did give six frees to four, um, and get, gave away about four frees against. So that's going to, um, affect the scoring. Um, but yeah, I think Maxi Gorn is a pretty safe bet. I mean, he's pri he's owned by 58%. I'm sure that'll decrease. There'll be some reactions to his score. But just remember that in past years, he has sort of started quite slowly and had bad bad first rounds and then bounced back um, and proved why you should be picking him. Tim English is another one that I'd be considering 715. It'd be hard to find the cash to get him in. But if I could get him in, it'd be good. He looked very good in the preseason. Looked like he, um yeah, continuing on from his scoring last year. Now into R2, um, I've got Brody Grundy again, should come as no surprise, 481.9K, 52% ownership. He looked great after halftime. It was quite a reversal between those two, Gorn and Grundy. Um, one didn't look good early. The other looked good at the end of the match. Had 33 hit outs, 23 disposals, six tackles. Did have three frees for and four frees against, so that didn't help him overall, um, but managed a score of 139. Um, and I think it was like a 99 point second half. So Matt, most of those points coming in the second half start him. I think he's a value option. He looks good. Um, and I think he's got a good um, midfield to work around as well. Now onto the bench, I do currently have Sam Naismith. So Naismith sits there. He played well on the weekend against Wits managed a score of 93, pretty respectable, should make cash based off that. The biggest question will be how long Nank is out for. Um, really just wanting to use him as a cash cow just to make that cash. Um, and then potentially if if Nank is out for a, for an extended period, can then, um you know, cover for a Gorn or a Grundy during their buys, fingers crossed. But we'll see how we go with that. That rounds out the rocks. Now onto the forwards, my favourite. Absolute favourite. Now, we're going to bypass most of these guys. Sammy Flanders. Sammy Flanders. Stupid, sexy Flanders. He is sitting in F1 currently. Go on, select. He's in 23% of sides. I think he got people got scared off in that preseason match against the Giants where he did score yeah, 65. Um, looked completely different on the weekend, thankfully, with a score of – I think he top scored for the, the Suns in the Richmond game. Oh, no, sorry, Jim's top score. He was second highest scorer for the Suns uh, at 124, had 77% time on ground, 26 disposals, um, four marks and three tackles, but started in the midfield. The role looks good. And I think in a year where we're so bereft of talent in the forward line or options in the forward line, I think he is a sh sure starter. So get him in. Now, player I am considering, he is currently the second most expensive forward. It is Luke Jackson. I'm not sure how I'd get him in. Might be through 
potentially downgrading a parish to him and then that might give me some cash elsewhere. Um, but yes, he's one that I am considering, obviously with the news that Sean Darcy will be out for uh, six or so weeks at least, you'd expect. Um, so he'll have some time to make some cash. Um, but also we've seen the upside he has when he is the number one ruck. You'd also think that potentially once um, Darcy's back, Jackson, assuming he's, you know, shown how how strong he can be um, as that number one ruck, may get a bit more um, time as that ruck um, just to ease um, Darcy back into it. We can, we can only hope, I guess. <laughs> uh, so one that I'm considering and one that I might have to change my structure up slightly to get in. Um, I'll show you a bit later how I might do that. All right, so now moving on to my F2, it is James Jordan, should probably come as no surprise, but looking at value in the forward line uh, with my F2 at sitting at 275.5K, obviously Jackson may affect that, um, may end up at F3, but anyway, he is in 49% of teams, probably had a interesting mix. His preseason game against the Lions um, looked really good, I think, jumped into everyone's consideration set again scored 115 um was on fire um with rotating through the midfield with 31 disposals looked a little bit different in the role on the weekend sort of rotated through the midfield but spent some time up forward um or rotating sort of half forward 18 touches three marks seven tackles the tackles are what's going to save him had an 80 score of 81 with 71 percent time on ground i think in the forwards that'll be what we need but i think the role's there for him um, with the likes of Mills and Parker and Taylor Adams out early on in the season. Now moving on to my F3, my current F3 is, oh, and this one is probably another one that's likely to change, James Harms, 258.3K, played against the Hawks in that um, preseason matchup. He is currently in 11% of teams, um, so not quite pod, but lower ownership. So it is a bit more risky. Scored a 74 um, from 17 disposals and a score of one goal one um, and 72% time on ground. He was really playing a half forward role. Um, five tackles helped him and the score that the goals will have helped him. It's probably really between him and Fife. I'm not a massive fan of Fife, but it's going to come down to whose ownership is higher. I mean, Fife's ownership would be, I'd say, considerably higher. Obviously, coming to him about 30K, more expensive as well. I mean, he's at 49% ownership, so the risk is lower there, but then potentially with harms, yeah, I mean, it could be bevoed as well. So it's a tough one there. Those are the two players I'm probably considering for that position um, or that spot in my team. It's hard, hard to look at at this stage. Now, moving on, again, guy that should come in, as no surprise, priced at 207.3. It is the number one pick for season 2020 or from the 2023 draft of the Eagles. And it is Harley Reid, 207.3K, as I said, owned by 71% of sides, unsurprising. Um, in that preseason matchup, he looked top notch, top, top notch, uh, with a score of... 88, which was, I think, the fourth or fifth highest for the Eagles, 73% time on ground, didn't manage to kick a goal, had 20 disposals though, um, and four marks and three tackles, played mostly in the central midfield, so I think the role's there. I mean, there'll be, there'll be fluctuations in his scoring. He's a first-year player, we've got to remember that, but I think um, his scoring will be solid enough. Sorry, now we'll move on to F5, and it is um, another rookie, Um Caleb Windsor, priced at 180k, 38% ownership. He looked good in the preseason matchup against uh the Blues, um, with a score of 77, 66% time on ground, two goals, and 11 disposals. Really playing that wing role. Had the two marks as well on the weekend against the Swans in that matchup. Didn't have sort of had the same sort of role, but I think the conditions. Probably got the better of him. Um, not necessarily as conducive to scoring for a winger. 58 was quite dewy, quite wet. Um, had 81% time on ground. Um, obviously, would be a, probably a slight sub risk. Had 13 tackle, 13 possessions and four tackles. Sorry. Um, yeah, I think he's still worth getting in your side. I think he's got job security. Just the sub risk, I guess, could be there. So now let's move on to F6 and. Probably should come as no surprise. 
reckon he is in quite a number of sides now. Um, it is 133.4K. Alex Sexton, so obviously from the Gold Coast Suns. Now, he really is the beneficiary of that new role of halfback. Um, looked the goods against um, in the preseason match. I mean, he was like the top score or second highest score or something um, against the Giants. Uh, 125, in fact, from 87% time on ground. Um, he had 87% disposal efficiency. 634 metres gained, uh, what is that, 15, 16 kicks, 15 handballs, 11 marks, massive one tackle. Huge game from him there. Obviously then played in on the weekend um, in round one, oh, sorry, round zero. Um, didn't go as well, but didn't, didn't sort of stink it up too much. Had that score of 73, I think it was, uh, 29 disposals, eight marks, and the one tackle again. 78% time on ground, but the 71% disposal efficiency and five acclaimers, which would have hurt him a little bit there. So he's in my that spot. I don't think he'll move. He's in quite a number of teams. Yeah, 48%. So strong, strong option there. Um, He'll be staying in there. Now, moving on to my first bench spot for the forwards, it is Darcy Wilson, uh, mid forward eligible, 130K. Um, Again, in quite a lot of teams, 56%. He looked the goods. Um, against North Melbourne, absolutely killed it on that in that wing spot, um, in that game. So he, I think he's he turned up off memory. Yeah, one hundred six from seventy nine percent time on ground. He had eighty seven percent disposal efficiency. He had six hundred and forty four meters gained in that game. Was benefited, yeah, by six freeze four. So that's huge for him. And had the twenty one disposals uh, for that one hundred and six. So. Looks good, um, provided he is uh, uh, best 22 and provided he's named, um, will be starting in my side. I can't see why he wouldn't be, um, but it is Ross the boss, so who knows. Finally, rounding out last spot, it is Aaron Cadman, uh, 127.6K. Um, yeah, look, I'm not a massive fan of a key position forward, uh, especially a rookie, because they're going to take, it's going to be harder for them. Um, I think he looks like he's starting to sort of put it all together, uh, played against the Suns in the preseason matchup, didn't do too badly. Um, I think he scored around 43, yeah, 43. Uh, 13 disposals, mostly kicks, as you'd expect. Kicked one goal. Yeah, not much more you can say about that. His family, it's 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 a slow cash cow, slow burn on the bench. You're really hoping that he kind of has one really big game. Um, again, played against Hollywood, didn't look too bad. I think he scored around 55 um, off the top of my head, will I get his stats up? Yep, 55. Kick two goals, one. Not too bad. Um, I think that's what you'll expect from him. Be a slow burn. Keep him on your bench. You don't want to rely on him as a scorer. And hopefully he can just make some cash. Um, but yeah, he's one that might also be changed um, depending on how I go. So in terms of obviously um, Jackson, one to consider with Sean Darcy out, um, probably one I'll be trying to bring in potentially at the expense of a, of a parish. Um, moving, so considering moving, you know, Wilson into my defense, into my midfield, and then um, trading up parish and basically downgrading parish down to um, uh, Jackson, which will free up a little bit of cash, which I could use elsewhere. But yeah, we, we can see how we go from there. So I think that just about rounds it out. Thank you for listening. Hope, hope that helped. Um, obviously, there are potential for some changes to be made ahead of round one, one depending on team sheets, injuries as well that might happen. But as as I said, um, a few players there uh, that are um, potentially looking at being changed, um, like trying to include a Jackson potentially or even a Fisher um, and across that back line as well. Yeah, if you have any feedback, any questions, or you want us to look at your own team, um, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, you can, of course leave a comment below and please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Um, it means the world to us. It helps us um, reach more out to the community. And of course, we want to give back to that community as well by um, allowing you to yeah, send in your questions or send in your teams. If you want any feedback before round one, um, yeah, you can reach us um, on Twitter at, at supercoach underscore edge, myself at Liam Evans underscore 95. I'll leave it up to Damon to decide um, and to include his handle. But of course um, you can reach out to him as well. And on Facebook and Instagram, just, you know, search Supercoach Edge, leave a comment, send us a DM, send us your team, screenshots, whatever you want. Um, 
and more than happy to have a look at those for you. Good luck ahead of round one. Hope hope you there's not too much carnage coming away. Hopefully all the rookies get named and looking forward to another year of Supercoach starting and uh, getting into a more regular podcast. So good luck. See you then, guys. <laughs> <laughs>